Hiya, so I've been on YouTube now for a year. I've been messing about painting on our garage wall for most of that time. The first video I uploaded was actually of our son's bedroom wall on which I painted a safari mural. So I've been doing the murals for a year, but I've been doing this stuff on the garage wall and painting over it, painting over it, painting over it. I've been doing that for most of that time. So I don't know, 11 and a half months or something like that. I thought I'd use this as an opportunity to just look back at those murals and take stock of the progression I'm making. I keep saying on these videos that the reason I'm doing them, the reason that I've got this YouTube channel is to kind of chronicle my attempts at getting better at mural painting and spray painting and all the different techniques that come with it. So anyone that's ever watched one of these videos or liked it or commented is very, very much appreciated. Because ultimately this will become a repository, a portfolio, whatever you want to call it. It'll be a place where I I can point to and say these this is the stuff that I've done especially since I paint over it all the time and the paintings that I do are lost to the ether so in this video I'm going to go chronologically through the murals that I've done and just kind of reflect nothing more nothing less just look at what I did say what I liked say what I didn't yeah we are going to start with the bedroom wall even though that's not the main wall that features on this channel the main wall that features on this channel is of course in my garage but we did start this whole thing off with a mural on our son's wall so we're going to start by looking at that one first of all the first thing to notice is i cannot believe it was less than a year ago that i had long hair i had a man bun that's locked down for you. The weirdest thing is uh, I thought it looked cool. Right, so the mural, I know the mural, I really, really enjoyed doing the mural. You know, you talk about a labor of love. This was for our firstborn's room. I always wanted to do this. I didn't want to just have a standard bedroom. I wanted to have something that you can look at and you can ask questions about. Something to stimulate his developing brain and, you know, animals, farmyard safari that sort of stuff is just it's perfect for kids isn't it you know learning what different animals are so yeah what i did for this was i took animals off google images and projected them penciled them out and then painted them um i didn't really know how it was going to work I, I, I didn't know if acrylic paints were going to work on a plaster wall um they did and it's still there to this day i was really really happy with how the giraffe turned out actually i thought the giraffe was the, the giraffe went surprisingly well. The elephant, this took me ages because I wasn't happy with the shading. Uh, you don't see it on this video, but I went backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards, darkening, lightning, darkening, lightning, and it, in the end, I was quite happy with it. That I would do different. The one thing I would do differently uh, if I was to do this again, and if we have another child, maybe I will do it again. And I, I, I didn't. I never actually decided on one consistent light source, which is absolute painting 101 it's before you do anything else decide where the light's coming from because all the animals just kind of look plonked on there which i suppose is fine for a baby's mural again with the lion's mane i went to red i went to dark i went to all over the show but i'm happy with it happy with the lion i've never painted a lion before i've never painted any of these animals before but i think if anything i regressed this I, I started this channel quite strongly and then when i started picking up spray paints that's where it all went wrong and that leads me on to the next video so with this one i wanted to throw myself in um not so much at the deep end because i, I think this was fairly easy technique to try but i could have just thrown myself into a simpler task i should i could have just done a bit of testing I could have done a bit of line work or something like that um, I think giving a technique like this a go uh, you know it combines different actions with the can yeah I'm not really down with the terminology of stuff so if I'm talking absolute rubbish let me know but yeah the, the different can, the, the canmanship um, in this one was was tested you know I had to get far away I had to get close up I had to get wispy I had to get sharp so it was an opportunity to just on a small piece try a few different things and also work with layers and understand how colors look when you spray them on top of each other because spray paints are just so different to any other paints i've ever worked with at this at the, at the time of recording this one is actually my most viewed video it's had over 3,000 views which is like 10 times 20 times more than than any of the other videos and I don't know why. <laughs> I, 
I'm not a YouTube algorithm expert, but I appreciate all 3,004 of you at the point of recording who have watched this. I think it went well. I'm watching it thinking this could have gone better. I look like I lack confidence and that's okay because it was my first time ever, but it was fun and I think it went well. Uh, looking back, I think I can do better now, but I'm honestly, I'm honestly happy with how it went. This is one of the sillier videos. This is when I did a silhouetted chimpanzee on the wall. Um, I think it looked better in my head, but all experimentation. The projector part of this video <laughs> looks absolutely naff, but this was not using spray cans at all. This was using a pen and the, the nature of the wall that I'm painting on. So it's breeze block brick, or if you're in America, cinder block. There's a stony surface on these bricks and it doesn't really lend itself to, to these paint pens, which I know are really satisfying to use on smooth surfaces, but on this rough surface, not so much. I think the chimpanzee looks all right in the end. A fun one, I enjoyed this. Uh, I probably, would I do it again? Maybe I'd like to work with that sort of pen again, but not on that sort of surface. Yeah, I was just, just messing around really, like a chimp. So this one, <laughs> this one I suppose was my first big project. Uh, it, you know, it took a, it took up a bit of a bigger space on the wall. It took a few different techniques and layers and colors and all that kind of stuff. It was a bit more of a big effort. You know, there was a thought process that went into the, the back of it. The, my favorite thing about this is, is the contrast. So when I, when I peeled the tape back and, and saw how well that worked as a stencil, I thought seeing those colors pop, I think I chose the wrong color. I chose the wrong color to, to use. I should have done the colors of the trainer. I should have had green lines with pink on the inside. I think, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but maybe I should have picked completely different colors altogether. But what I did like about this was the way that the colors popped against each other and the crisp lines. I was surprised how crisp the lines were um, using that electrical tape. I like this, I like this. It's, you can see me getting a bit more confident with with a spray can. I mean, this is only really, my, it's only my second piece using a spray can. I think I was probably a bit more confident than, than I was with the open sign. I've, I've wasted a lot of paint, actually. There was no need to, to spray that much pink for how much you can actually see of the pink in the finished product. But, you know, there was a lot of intricate messing about with tape, so I learned things along the way and I still wear those trainers today. Those trainers have done me well. I've actually bought them since this video. I've bought those trainers in all gray. I'm a little bit a little bit obsessed with them. Um, I'm probably a bit too old for them, but don't care. Comfiest trainers I've ever had. Um, yeah. Now this was just, this was just fun. I mean, making your own stencil, just cutting a hole out of cardboard as a square and then just using it as a pixel. Yeah, it was fun. And it also, this was my first video where I just decided not to focus so much on the editing because if I keep doing that, I'm never gonna get videos out. I've not got time to sit there and edit because obviously that's what takes the longest time with these projects is, is getting the clips of videos together. You know, I'm, I'm recording so much on my phone, on my DSLR, this, that and the other, different angles and then I'm stitching them together, I'm doing an intro video. This was the first video where I just thought, you know, sod all that. I'll just have the camera rolling and it can just record what I'm doing. You don't need to see my bare back. You don't need to see my boxer shorts. You definitely don't need to see that horrendous hair, but I'm also blocking off most of the, the time I'm painting. So maybe this wasn't the best idea to just, and also the camera keeps going out of focus. So I need to find a balance between just letting the camera run and uploading that and putting some effort into, into the video editing side of things because a big chunk of this video is just my ass. The pixel stuff was fun. I think really I just wanted to finish off that, that wall and just put something in that bottom left hand corner. There's not really any other thought process behind it. I thought, what can I do that's quick, easy uh, and quite fun? This was the spray paint version of the chimp one in that it was just highlights on a black wall, not much more to it than that. It wasn't that difficult to put together. Um, but one of the things I wanted to test out was a theory that blue tack could be used for a, for a stencil. When I'm using tape, it's quite hard to, to mold it to the exact shapes. It's hard to get curves. It's hard to get intricate details done with tape. So I thought, why not try 
and use blue tack. It kind of works. I don't think I'll do it again. I think I'll just get better at using a can and get better at using tape and use smaller tape and, and all that kind of stuff if I have to use tape. But it was something I tried. Something I tried didn't really work. Move on, don't you? Yeah, this wasn't one of my more successful paintings. I think I just wanted to get a Cantona painting out of my system and I did do. Now this one is probably the first one that I was really proud of. I wanted to go big, I wanted to take up the full space, I wanted to use different techniques, I wanted to put colour on every single brick and that's what I did with this retro wave. I chose the retro wave design because it was fairly simple. Um, you know, it looks, on the face of it, it looks quite complicated, but it's really not. It's just geometric shapes. You know, I can tape it all out and not go far wrong. I, I think I wasn't confident enough to take on a portrait or a face or something that people recognize because if I get that 10% wrong, it looks horrendous. If you get a cartoon landscape, which is what how I would describe retro, retro wave landscapes, if you get that 10% wrong, it still looks 99% right. I know the math doesn't add up. It makes sense in my head, but there's a lot that I loved about this. This was the first one that was really hard to paint over. I was just getting more confident with the spray can. On the whole, this is the most important piece I've done because it taught me more. It taught me about different techniques. It taught me how to get past mistakes. Oh, the rocky one, the rocky one. Now this one, you talk about making mistakes and rectifying them. This was a massive learning curve as well. Um, I think I wouldn't have been able to do this if it wasn't for the retro way of one, making mistakes, being confident enough to be bullish with the can. I could have given up on the rocky one halfway through if, if it wasn't for the, the confidence I built up because that rocky one, it looked awful. It was my first time using a doodle grid. It was my first time drawing a face on a wall. It was my first time drawing a face with spray paint. There was a lot of firsts for me on this Rocky, but I'm really, really happy with how I pulled it back. You might call it cheating with what I did with the, the Photoshop app. I can't believe I thought that beer can in here wrapped in tape was, was, was that funny. But yeah, I, I pulled it back. That, that is rocky and I'm really happy with that and, and the bits where I'm going over his hair in the black paint, that's another confidence thing because that could have gone wrong and it's alright that it went wrong a bit. I mean, what, I'm not going to get his eyebrows exactly right, I'm not going to get his flicks of hair that come down in, onto his forehead exactly right. Yeah, I ended up with something I was quite proud of on the wall. That one wasn't as important for my learning curve as the retro wave, but it was harder to paint over, I think. I think when I painted over that rocky one, that was... That was but, but it's all fun and games, it's all part of it. Painting over these things is, is, is what I signed up for. Shut up. This one was probably more beneficial just because it was experimental. It was another one of those where I just wanted to try different techniques and see what I could and couldn't do. I didn't blend the sky very well. I don't think I chose the right blues, to be honest. That sky just looks awful. I think I was rushing this. I don't think I'm particularly proud of what, what I did here. There was a lot of experimentation with colour and how I could create light coming from behind the clouds. I think there was some success in that. One of my favourite colours that I've used in this whole channel and on, on this wall is that peach, coral, orange, dusk sunlight colour coming off the clouds. Yeah, that's one positive to take from this. It doesn't look too bad when it's finished. I think it's it's a basic sky. You can tell it's a sky, you can tell the clouds, you can tell it's dusk. But I think the next time I do this, I want more than you can tell what it is. I realised I've not done much text, so I wanted to just off the cuff decide to put some text on. And I went for absolutely basic text. You know, there's live, laugh, love, there's gin o'clock, and then there's good vibes only. I wanted to play with metallic gold as well, so that was an excuse to use metallic gold. And I think it was a little bit drippier. The metallic gold was a bit drippy, it was more liquidy. Um, so it was quite hard to manage, but now it's fun. Probably my favourite one. Uh, favourite one for different reasons. I keep talking about the Retro Wave one being my favourite one in terms of teaching me 
uh, and being the important part of the learning curve. The Rocky one is a favourite because of how happy I was with it, with it, with the finished product. The Shrek one, I'm happy with it because from having the idea to getting it on the wall was, I think it was like a day. Um, my wife was away with work, baby was in bed, and I think I probably spent a total of two hours, two and a half hours painting it on the wall. And what, add on to that 20, 15, 20 minutes of deciding what picture and doing the doodle grid. That, you know, it, it, it was an exercise in just whacking something up on the wall. I didn't think about what I'm learning. I didn't think about what techniques I'm gonna try and get better at. I just thought, I wanna do this, so I'm gonna do it. You know, I've got some time, you know, I'm on my own. I am just gonna paint. And I decided, as I say in the video, I decided that I've got a lot of green and I don't know what else I'm gonna use green for other than to paint Shrek. So, so that's what I did. By accident, what I did with this painting was build up layers an onion of shading by putting the dark grey in first and then putting the green over it and the green over bits that doesn't have the grey on and it ended up having more depth to it than any other painting that I've done. Watching this back this at the time of recording this is the last one this is the latest one and looking back on this I can see that I'm a much more confident spray paint artist than I was in the first video the first two or three videos we're not doing the continuity thing on this outro. Um, as you'll notice, I've got a different t-shirt on. I'm, I'm stood up and I have actually, believe it or not, since had a haircut. So my hair might look a little bit different, even if it's been so long since I've recorded the intro that I've had a haircut and then that hair has grown to the point where I need another haircut. It's been about three or four weeks since I recorded that intro. And as such, this video is now gonna be a bit late and it's at the, at the start of the video, I'm talking about how I've been on YouTube for a year. I think uh, by the time this video gets uploaded, it'll be about a year and a month. So what? It's just a compilation video. It's just me reflecting on the, the stuff I've done, as I keep saying. Yeah, it's nice to do that. It's nice to go through those videos. Uh, nice to uh, remember what's been on the wall before. Kind of put myself into the mindset, back into the mindset of how I felt while I was doing them, what I was thinking. One of the main things that I noticed is I remember feeling quite, not nervous, it's nervous is the wrong word, but a bit, a bit reluctant or apprehensive to get paint on the wall. And I think it was, I think one of the biggest kind of growth things is just not being scared to just, just get stuff on. I think that goes a long way with uh, with spray paint and I'll paint it on a big wall. You can correct mistakes, you can go over stuff, you can take things in a different direction. In fact, most of the time you have to take things into a different direction from the one in which you started to head, if that makes sense, did I get my grammar right there? Yeah, so I've learned to adapt. I've learned to adapt and I've learned to get a bit more skillful with the can. I've learned obviously different techniques, which is what I've been trying to teach myself from the start. And I've I've got to play with some decent images and I've got to do some decent projects. And I think another kind of progression is that I've had more fun with each one. The Shrek one was a lot of fun. So I'm working on something fun at the minute, actually, uh, you know, like Shrek or Rocky. I'm, I'm actually painting something to do with Pokemon, if you remember that. Um, and there's gonna be a giveaway involved in that. So recently I actually got some of my old 1999 2000 pokemon cards graded you know with all the hype around them at the minute i thought it was worth getting some of them graded so one of those is going to be the subject of a giveaway in my next video so you're going to have to be subscribed to being with a chance so if you like pokemon and you like winning things then subscribe and yeah so that's that's my video on what i've done so far on youtube so thank you for watching and i hope to see you in the next video for that pokemon giveaway all right nice one see you later